The table shows values for a function g at selected values of x, which of the following claim and explanation statements best fits the data. Okay, so looking at a quick thing, they want us to determine if it's linear or quadratic. If something is linear, that means every time this goes up by the same number and all of these go up by one, these guys would have to go up by the same number too, and that's what would make it linear. So in order to get from 53 to 78, I add 25. In order to get from 78 to 97, I don't add 25, I add 19. This one, I add 13. And this one, I add 7. So since I didn't add by the same number every time, it's not linear and it's not linear. Now there's a second test to this before you think about a calculator because this is not a calculator section. In order to find if it's a quadratic, you repeat the process, okay? So what we did is we found the rate of change and found that the rate of change was not the same, okay? But is the rate of change of the rate of change the same? Well, I guess we're about to find out. Uh, in order to get from 25 to 19, you subtract 6. In order to get from 19 to 13, you subtract 6. And in order to get from 13 to 7, you subtract 6. So this is a quadratic. Get B. But why? Because the rate of change over consecutive equal length input values is con uh, constant? Or because the change in the average rates of change over the consecutive equal length input intervals is constant? That's my guy. Now, I know the wording is very confusing. It is. And when I look at a problem like this, I have to get beyond the wording. What I have here in blue is the rate of change period. And C is saying that the rate of change is constant. That is not true. D is saying that the change in the average rate of change, which means this is my average rate of change, this change is what's changing. My gosh, so much change, I should be going to an arcade. The answer is D.